Okay, I think we are ready to get going this Saturday morning. It's a bit of a spillover from the holiday next Wednesday. So we'll just have three research talks this morning. And then I think the schedule has seven hours of discussions after that. So we'll see how well we do with that. But the first talk is coming from Bible of Gotham, who has joined me coming in from England for this uh, program. He'll be telling us about matrix entanglement and its connections to gauge gravity duality. So please get us underway. Okay, um, so my talk is based on this uh, paper written by Masanori and Taljaviki, Cheng Peng, and myself. Um, yeah, to motivate this, we first noticed that the quantum entanglement entropy plays an important role in uh, the information puzzle and in emergent uh, geometry. Over the past decade and a half, there have been a lot of formulas such as the uh, Ryu Takanagi, the HRT. QES prescription and island prescription, which uh, allow us to calculate the entanglement entropy of uh, some subregion on the boundary space time by computing the area of some homological surface. But uh, what happens when this uh, boundary theory is some quantum mechanical theory, like uh, zero plus one dimensional um, matrix model or the SYK theory, then you have no space to partition and then these formulas would not really work. In that case, we need something else. Also for matrix models, which have uh, known dual gravity descriptions, it would be important if we can understand how entanglement entropy will be calculated in these models. So motivated from that, let us consider the following model uh, shown in equation one here. Here, P and X are matrix valued fields. They are N cross N matrices, and the indices I go from one to nine. That is the number of scalars. When the coupling G is zero, it is simply the Gaussian matrix model, which uh, we heard about yesterday in Denjo's talk. And when G, uh, G tends to infinity, we can drop this mass term. And what we get is the bosonic part of the BFSS matrix model, which again, we heard about in Denjo's talk. The matrix value operators P and X, they can be expressed in terms of U and generators uh, as shown here with the canonical commutation relation between these generators in terms of adjoint indices given like this. Now to understand the geometry encoded in these matrix, we need to consider three things. First, we need to look at the gauge invariant Hilbert space, which is the Hilbert phase of physical states. We need to consider the extended Hilbert space, which has both the singlet states and the non-singlet states, and we need to consider coordinate eigenstates. Uh, the partition function, which can be expressed in terms of both the invariant Hilbert space and the extended Hilbert space is equivalent up to a projection of states from the extended Hilbert space to the gauge invariant Hilbert space. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, as shown here, the projection amounts to integrating over the gauge orbit of any given state in the extended Hilbert space, which is the Polyakov loop, uh, as shown here. Now, we will consider low energy wave packets, which are centered at yi in the coordinate eigenspace, which is r9 n squared, and qi in the momentum eigenspace as shown with this uh, equation six, and we will minimize the energy uh, yq, h, yq. Now this state is a state is in the extended Hilbert space and is not necessarily gauge invariant. And uh, the action of uh, any element of the gauge group is to rotate this wave packet in the r 9 n squared coordinate eigenspace as uh, like this. Now, any of this uh, wave packet has uh, a width of the order of one. So if we consider two wave packets at two distinct positions, the separation between those wave packets is of the order of uh, root n. So at large n, any two wave packets will be well separated. So they'll be well defined. Now suppose all these nine matrices by i. Yeah. Um, so the wave packet is defined like this. So we have for the uh, coordinate eigenspace, it's expectation value of, so yeah, this one. 
So this tells you about the center of the wave packet and the width of the wave packet is given by fluctuations in this field, which in R9 n squared is going to be of the order of one. And uh, yeah, like I said, they're not gauge invariant. And we, uh, to see their low energy wave uh, structure, we we'll have to minimize over the invert, uh, over the Hamiltonian. So suppose all these nine uh, matrices, Yi, which is the center of the wave packet, suppose all of them can be uh, simultaneously diagonalized, then the eigenvalues of these uh, Yi's and Qi's will respectively give us the position and the momentum of the D0 brains, as proposed in this paper by Witten. Um, now, when two or more D brains coincide, then uh, naturally there is an enhancement in the gauge group. So, for example, if N1D brains coincide at one place and N2D brains coincide at another place, then the gauge group becomes UN1 cross UN2. If the, man, uh, if the matrices YIs cannot be diagonalized, but they can be simultaneously block diagonalized, then this will amount to an extended uh, or an excited state of D0 brains and strings connecting uh, them. We can construct such states by choosing Y and Q appropriately. Uh, now, using this, we can somehow encode the geometry of uh, gravitational objects. Uh, for example, we can consider two stacks of D0 brains, N1 D0 brains in one stack and N2 D0 brains in another stack with these two stacks separated by a distance L. To construct such a state, to construct such a wave packet, we will take the center of the wave packets to be of the form described here. here these, uh, this is a block diagonal structure with the uh, blocks Y1 and Q1 uh, of uh, N1 cross N1 and uh, Y2 and Q2 of uh, N2 cross N2. The Y1 the, in the coordinate eigenspace is centered around L by 2 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0. And Y2 here is centered around, around minus L by 2 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 with some fluctuations where the uh, fluctuations are negligibly small compared to the uh, distance of the uh, two stacks L. Now this effectively describes uh, two matrix models, one with gauge group UN1 and another with gauge group UN2. The off diagonal excitations in the fields correspond to interactions between these two matrix models. And uh, if the diagonal blocks have sufficient energy, then these two stacks of D0 brains can be thought of as uh, black holes, and this system will describe a two black hole system. Now, uh, when we take the separation between them to infinity, then these two matrix models will completely decouple, and we'll have two copies of Hilbert spaces. If we further take N1 equals N2, the number of brains in both the stacks to be equal, then <clears throat> we, will get the same cop uh, a copy of the same Hilbert space, which essentially will help us to define a thermofield double state. Another interesting application of this is to think about the small black hole. A small black hole can be described by a partially deconfined state. Uh, we'll hear more about partial deconfinement and partial deconfined states in Hiromasa's talk later today. So uh, we essentially consider a wave packet centered around Y as such, where we have one uh, block here, Y1 and Q1, which is N1 cross N1, which corresponds to N1 excited D0 brains and strings connecting them. There are N2 D0 brains, which uh, correspond to just brains sitting at the origin in uh, a non-excited state. To define a small black hole, the N2, the confined sector, has to be very much greater than N1. And these, uh, uh, the, the blocks have to have uh, enough amount of energy as described in the paper by uh, Horowitz and Martinek. Um, to describe Hawking radiations, we can give small uh, uh, non-zero eigenvalues to this lower diagonal blocks of the order of one. Schematically, this can be described by say this diagram where this sector, the larger block, this corresponds to Y1 and Q1. And this is the deconfined sector, which corresponds to uh, a small black hole. The Hawking radiations are these smaller two cross two blocks as defined here. And the confined sector is the blue region here. 
if we go from left to right here, then it corresponds to um, formation of a black hole. And if we go from left to uh, right to left here, it schematically corresponds to evaporation of a black hole. Now coming on to the formula for matrix entanglement. Um, suppose we divide the N square generators of UN into two sets, one set A and one set A bar consisting all the rest. Then effectively we can factorize the extended Hilbert space, extended being the underlined word here, uh, into H A and H A bar where H A and H A bar can be seen as spanning sets of, uh, these of uh, states corresponding to these generators. The question is, can we separate colors in such a way? The answer would be yes, by using the wave packets and the geometric description that we described just before, we can separate the colors in such a way. By separating colors in a, such a way, we'll be spontaneously breaking the gate symmetry from UN to some UM cross U n minus m, where m is our deconfined sector. Uh, this will confine us to a given super selection sector by uh, putting some boundary conditions on the states. In this way, we can define entanglement entropy between colors on a fixed super selection sector. As an example, let us again consider the two stacks of D brains that we had uh, considered previously with N1 stacks at one location and two stacks at another location and the wave packet centered around Y and Q as such. Now, the, like I said before, the off diagonal blocks mediate interactions between uh, the stacks uh, of D0 brain sitting at two different locations. So the degrees of freedom or the states corresponding to these off diagonal blocks should be treated with care. We have two options. Either we can combine the states corresponding to the off diagonal blocks with the one of the uh, diagonal blocks. In that case, the extended Hilbert space will be factorized schematically in this way. Another option is to treat the states corresponding to off diagonal blocks separately. In that case, the extended Hilbert space will schematically be factorized in this way in HA, HP, and HC. If we choose the first option, that is to consider the off-diagonal blocks along with some of the uh, diagonal block, then we can define the entanglement entropy in the usual way by first defining the reduced density matrix on A by taking the trace over A bar, and then using the Fondman formula, uh, minus trace rho log rho. In this way, we can define the Fondman entropy of uh, region A. If we treat the off diagonal blocks separately, then uh, we first have to trace over the degrees of freedom associated to the Hilbert space C. We will get a reduced density matrix on the region AB like this. The reduced density matrix rho AB then necessarily will not be in a pure state. And uh, the value of the entropy SAB computed like this will be non zero. A good measure of the entanglement entropy between region A, sector A and sector B in that case would be the mutual information, which is SA plus SB minus SAB with SA and SB computed by taking uh, appropriate traces. Now, an interesting application of this is to compute the entropy of a small black hole, which uh, like we discussed earlier is described by a, um, by a partially deconfined state. So let us consider the small black hole. Then the Fondman entropy of the deconfined sector A corresponds to the Bekenstein Hawking entropy of the small black hole. At this point, I'm not taking the black, uh, the black hole to be radiating, but now let us consider that the black hole has started radiating. Then this small block here, this is the sector A, the de larger deconfined sector A which corresponds to the small black hole. This region B will correspond to the radiations. It has a size of M prime cross M prime. In addition to this, we have D zero brains, which are sitting at the origin of R nine N squared, which uh, correspond to the confined sector, uh, which is uh, shown here in blue. As the black hole evaporates, the size of M decreases and the size of M prime will increase. To compute the entropy of the black hole, we first have to trace out the Hilbert space corresponding to the degrees of freedom of the confined sector HC. 
we'll define the reduced density matrix rho AB for the black hole and radiation system combined by tracing over uh, C. We can then also define the Fonium entropy of the black hole and the entropy of radiations, SA and SB respectively in such a way. Now, like I said- uh, A and B, A and B are the black hole and Hawking radiation, right? Yeah. And C is the- Confined sector, okay. the D0 brains which are sitting at the origin. Okay. Um, so as the black hole evaporates, uh, the black hole entropy of S, uh, the black hole entropy SA will decrease because the size of the uh, radiation, uh, the black hole sector, the deconfined sector will decrease. So there will be a less number of uh, degrees of freedom associated to that. And the radiation entropy SB will increase. So it can be seen that at early times when uh, the black hole is very large and there's essentially no radiations, SAB, which is the radiation plus uh, black hole combined, will be equal to SA. And at late times, when there's more radiation and the size of the black hole is very small, uh, it's almost negligent, then SAB will be almost equal to SB. There's no reason to expect that uh, A and B are directly entangled, so SAB would be SA plus SB. Now, if we plot the time evolution of uh, SAB, the black hole plus radiation system combined, combined, then we see that it will not exhibit the page curve. So what do we do to get the page curve back? To do that, we need to take into account the degrees of freedom associated with the confined sector, which is the D0 brain sitting at the origin. Now the entire system ABC is in a pure state. So SABC is going to be zero. SAC will be SB, the uh, black hole plus confined sector combined would be SB. And SBC, the radiation plus confined sector would be SA. Now, if we interpret the entropy of radiations as minimum of SB and SBC, then we see from this uh, curve here that we will get the page curve back with the radiation at early times given by SB here and radiations at late times given by SBC here. What is that rate, uh, such a straight flat part in that curve? Yeah, Sorry? SB, SB. This? Yeah. Yeah, at late times, there are only radiations, like at very, very, very late times. So this is the entropy of just radiation sector, SP. Okay. So at late times, because there are only radiations, so the entropy will be Okay, okay, thanks. Constant. Geometrically, the degrees of uh, freedom associated with the region A, which is the deconfined sector, those are the excited D0 brains. They will correspond to degrees of freedom uh, associated with the horizon of the black hole, like this. The radiation, which are these small blocks uh, here, the radiation, which are these small blocks here, will correspond to these radiations here. And the region C, which is a D brain sitting at the origin, will be some degrees of freedom deep inside uh, the horizon of the black hole, like this. Now, at late times, because there is less screening due to this, uh, uh, the excited D0 brains in the horizon, the region C, the confined sector will be strongly entangled with the radiations. And when we combine these two regions, that is why the Fonium entropy of SBC will go down. Um, so in this way, we see that if we combine and interpret the entropy of radiations as SBC by combining the radiation sector and the confined sector together, we will recover the page curve. Another way that we can see why we need to combine the co confined sector with the radiations at late times is by uh, seeing the hidden press skill protocol for information recovery. Now we have the same story here as always. There's Alice who has her diary. She wants to throw it into a black hole. There's Bob who does not know the meaning of privacy and wants to uh, recover that information in the diary. And he has access to uh, the radiation region, region B, but not the black hole. But what about the confined sector C? Let us assume that Bob has access to the region BC. It's, he has access to both the radiations and the confined sector. This essentially means that he knows some reduced density matrix rho BC. To read Alice's diary, now he has three options. One, he can keep both the region B and region C. In that case, the entropy associated with the information that he has 
would be SBC, which is equal to SA. Second option is to discard uh, the confined sector. Then he'll get uh, the entropy associated with the information that he has would be SB as he'll get uh, rho hat B. Third option is to discard the radiations themselves. And then he'll get uh, the reduced density matrix that he gets is rho hat C, which corresponds to the uh, entropy SC, which is SA plus SB. To gain as much information as possible, Bob should minimize the entanglement entropy. Hence, he should choose option two before page time and option one after it, which is to say that he should discard the confined degrees of freedom before the page time and he should take uh, the degrees of, and he should consider the confined degrees of freedom after the page time. But the thing is that the universe does not care what Bob's choices are. So Bob should actually not have a choice. In that case, the degrees of freedom associated to the confined sector region C should only be available to Bob after the page time and not before it. In the second case, is it like SB equal to SA? Sorry, which one? Uh, in the second case, when uh, Bob discards C. No, SB is not equal to SA. Okay. In that case, existed. You know. Sorry? So in that case, what is SB? SB is the just the radiation of this, uh, uh, the entropy of this radiation sector. Just. Ah. Huh. These radiations, or if I okay go back here, just the entropy related to this. Oh, okay, okay, thanks. Yeah, now you got a question. Oh, yeah, I'll be able to finish it. I think so. Now, with regard to the role played by the confined sector, we see three things one, D brains in the confined sector are sitting behind the horizon, so there are some degrees of freedom corresponding to some region deep inside the horizon. Combined with the radiations at late times, it reproduces the entropy of the black hole, which is SA, which is SBC. And three, Bob can see the confined sector only after this time, which means that the degrees of freedom in at least the entropy formula, the confined sector plays its role after page time. Now, these properties seem eerily similar to the uh, entanglement islands, which uh, in a similar way, in the entropy formula make their role available after the page time. So one can kind of think that this confined sector is playing the role of the entanglement islands in some way. However, there are some differences and we always need to be cautious. Firstly, it might not be quite appropriate to interpret the degrees of freedom associated to the confined sector to be contained inside the black hole. They might be explaining the exterior of the black hole or the background in which the black hole and the radiations live in as proposed in this paper. Secondly, the notion of the entanglement wedge and how geometry is exactly encoded in uh, the matrix degrees of freedom is not very clear. The entanglement is, uh, wedge is quite uh, important in this island proposal, so it will not be entirely appropriate to uh, assume that these the confined sector and entanglement elements are this and entanglement islands are the same thing. In conclusion, we introduced the notion of matrix entanglement. We saw that the matrix and uh, degrees of freedom sl splits into multiple sectors, the confined sectors and uh, uh, the confined sector, and we, uh, which have some geometric interpretation, interpretation in terms of string theory. Uh, the gravitational interpretation will be covered a little bit more by, I think, Stratos and also by Georg next week. We discussed the application of this gravitational geometric interpretation to black holes, and we discussed the important role played by the confined sector in reproducing the page curve. As outlook, we first have to exactly understand the role played by this confined sector in the geometry itself. Does it correspond to the interior of the black holes or is it describing the background space time? Second uh, outlook is to compute the entanglement entropy using numerical methods somehow. Third is to define this matrix entanglement for other theories and other math contents. For example, uh, the O-N vector matrix model, which has a known gravitational dual in uh, Vasilev higher spin theories. And the last, and, but not the least and most important perhaps, perhaps is to have a gauge invariant description of matrix entanglement because the physical states are gauge invariant states. Um, thank you. Thanks for your attention.
I love, I think I heard a question coming already. Yeah, uh, you told that uh, can, this confined phase is uh, outside the black, sorry, inside the black hole, right? But in that picture, it, it, sure. huh? in, the, in that picture, it was like, it inside is outside the black. the black hole. No, 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 this, this is the confined phase. Uh, this is the black hole. Uh, okay, where is the confined phase? Okay. C. Uh, there was some, uh, you know, uh, uh, there was some uh, square type of picture. Uh, yeah, that, that is the matrix degrees of freedom. So uh, okay, in this, yeah, yeah, in the, in this really, so these are the matrix eigenvalues in a sense. This is just for uh, like for your eyes. It's not a real representation. Oh, okay. So yeah. This is just to have that in the matrix. There's a deconfined sector which is like this, and it's not an exact representation. Oh, okay. yeah. Geometrically, it corresponds to more like this. And one more thing on that page, curve, maybe, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. So usually uh, we have like uh, this SP is in increasing with linearly with time. There is no saturation. So here, here we are getting the saturation. So that is, I think, something new. No, here. So when the black hole has completely evaporated, there is only radiations. Okay. When there will be no more radiation because the black hole is evaporated, the number of uh, Hawking ra radias or radiations they'll be constant. So yeah, uh, yeah. after this... some time, that will be this entanglement entropy will be just constant, okay. right? So uh, okay. So um, I don't know if you've seen these, but Sean Hartnell had this recent paper. Huh? Sean Hartnell had this recent paper on droplets and how to get entanglement entropy there, okay. and. Oh, what they did uh, so. So I'll go back to your picture of the of the thing, of the of the the other one, the one of the blue, that one. So what they do is is they separate the eigenvalues a, b, and then the eigenvalues of c that would not be on a and b. Mm -hmm. And to compute entanglement entropy to each one of them, you have to add the off-diagonal pieces mm -hmm. that you that you have. And then what you're doing is, in some sense, doubling all the off-diagonals. To, to kind of generate the modes that are entangled in some sense. It's it's mm -hmm. that scene. It, do you know how this relates to that or, or you haven't thought about that yet? I haven't thought about that yet, but uh, are you saying it's kind of this, this kind of setup? Right, so in this one, you would call the entanglement of A is the entanglement of the Hilbert space of H plus HC. Yeah. Right? Okay. And then the entanglement entropy of B will be the HB plus HC. HC. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the idea is that the HCs are the thing that are kind of doubled and that are kind of yeah, in, 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 a, in a bigger Hilbert space need to be kind of traced to the same density matrix in some sense. Okay. Uh, so that was the idea that there was some kind of that the, that what you are supposed to do is double the the, the off diagonals in some sense. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think I've read that paper, but yeah, it'd be nice to think about that. No, not not exact calculation. No. Yes. Um, no, I mean the paper of of Sean Hartnell was supposed to be about the quantum Hall effect, so it was supposed to be just a single matrix model in some sense. Uh, so it was hard to understand how to get entanglement entropy in that case, and he was saying that you had to do this kind of gauge variance splitting and doubling in, in some sense that was determined by some operator in, in that was the thing that you were using to cut uh, so here the operator would be in some sense um, where the density the, the, the local density on the diagonal sector is kind of big or small and then use that to kind of decompose the upper space into projector uh, with regard to i think his question there were some attempts to calculate entropy between two stacks of D brains of equal sizes by, oh shit, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, but yeah, there were some attempts of doing something like that uh, by some PT in Japan. I'll get back to you with the names quite soon. Yeah, but, sorry? I mean, there were also yeah. some other attempts doing it in fuzzy spaces that, yeah. you know, Johanna Katzmarek and various other people were trying to do, and that never seemed to work out quite right, so. Yeah, um, my time is almost over, but in the paper, we have considered these fuzzy spheres and all that stuff, too. I didn't have time to go over them right now, but yeah, you can read question. the paper if you want to. So in the extended Hilbert space, 
you showed that the states are typically not the gaze invariant. So the, my question is, ki, how will you restore the gaze invariant in the final results? That's a good question and we need to work on that. That's a good question. We don't know the answer. We need to work on that. In the usual QFT, we restore the gaze invariance and we... Yeah, and because the gaze invariant states are typically the physical states. We need to work on that. Uh, there are some problems associated to that. Thank you. And I think that takes us to the end of the time and time to move on. So let's thank Vibhav again for...